I've tried everything. Subdimensional relays, quantum entanglement devices, portable music players you can fit into your pocket. I've done everything and yet I still can't beat that Abe's employee of the month. Yeah. Check out this instant disco game that Dr. Abe was hanging out in the labs. What the hell is this? Throughout Abiotic Factor's large cast of characters, there isn't one as popular as Dr. Abe Stern. Be it for his slightly aloof personality or his chemistry with a good friend and co-worker, many of us love the marketable character of Abe. But behind the goofy persona, there's a legitimate scientific genius with a series of contributions dotted all throughout the scientific field and the gate research facility, mistakes and all. And with his many appearances both inside the Emergency at Cascade and a completely standalone water cooler series on the Deep Field YouTube channel, I think it's about time we cover all of the major story behind Gates' best employee. Dr. Abe Stern, a molecular scientist at the Gate Research Facility, is without a doubt one of the most prevalent characters on the stage of Abiotic, aside from other notables like Dr. Mance and Dr. Riggs. But like many faces around the facility, not much is known about his past or personal life, with only glimpses of his interests and such from the aforementioned water cooler series and conversations between him and his good friend, who we always see by his side, Dr. Janet Ross, an experimental physicist specializing in exotic materials. First seen chronologically in a water cooler short in 1990, three years before the game's events, a conversation between Abe and Janet detail Abe's interest in testing out Tim's early new invention, the World Wide Web. Janet, Tim says hi. Tim who? This Tim is actually Tim Berners-Lee, the real-life British scientist at CERN, or the European Organization of Nuclear Research, responsible for inventing the World Wide Web information system in real life, with Janet stating, that guy always wants us to test something. Tim. He always wants something. Also revealed in a water cooler episode is the origin of Aya-018, the red chair. In their usual conversation by the water cooler, Abe talks about Charles and Di's divorce. Di is, of course, Diana Spencer, the at the time spouse of Prince Charles, shortly after their separation in 1992, where afterwards it's revealed by Janet, Aya-018 was actually given to them by the young Diana at some point, chalking it up to being in their possession as a wedding present. Diana Spencer, the Princess of Wales future queen of England. She's divorcing him. The one who gave us IS-18? Although Abe's true influence in the overall hierarchy of the Gate Research Facility is never strictly stated, having connections to such important computer scientists like Tim Berners and a possibly not personal but professional connection with European royalty really puts Abe's ability as a scientist into picture. Along with Abe's interesting escapades with meta-referential connections, the bulk of Abe's presence at Gate is his work on many of the immurement subjects at the Cascade Research Facility like that of IS-017, IS-015, IA-083, IA-091, IA-107, IA-0307, and many instances of A2 wildlife. First is IA-017, the amnesia threshold. It's one of the more dangerous and unpredictable inanimate immurement subjects, and is one of the few IS videos on the Deep Field YouTube channel in an interview style led by our favorite pair, Abe and Janet, who presumably had a part in researching these immurement subjects. Recovered on an island off of Maine in 1986, the amnesia threshold is a seemingly normal wooden doorway with no physical abnormalities apart from strange inscriptions on the wooden beams the frame is constructed with. Spectography confirms the origins of the wood as teak being from Pondicherry, India, with heavy salt permeation, suggesting marine time use sometime in 1890. Of course, the IS's true anomalous effect activates when walking through the frame into the other side, where an amount of memory is erased from anyone walking through, from days to years years. Abe explains his variables, like how fast someone moves through it, and even yearly seasons, with summer having a stronger effect than winter. Abe also suggests a strange force could be trapped inside the wood, something so traumatic it causes amnesia effects to anyone passing through. This sentiment is also shared with Kay Young in a conversation between Marta Havel and Michael Hutton in this email. 
I053, or Kizkola, even if not one of the most dangerous subjects in Cascade Containment, is definitely a notable one, especially when it comes to Dr. Abe. Kizkola is a carbonated drink dispensed in a vending machine stored at the research facility, currently stationed in a lab's hallway. Originally attempting to seal away the vending machine in the past, Gate quickly realized the destructive nature of the apparatus when barred from easy access to scientists and other staff, completely destroying the hallway it was locked in. After being reinstated as a permanent installment in the heavy foot traffic hallway it is currently in and marked with cautionary tape, our favorite molecular scientist developed a very heavy sweet tooth and an eventual addiction to the anomalous carbonated beverage, even leaving titular Kiss Cola stickers plastered everywhere around the facility, and eventually, unfortunately losing his hair in the span of a year, possibly due to the overconsumption of Kiz. I covered IS-083 and IS-307, Space Queen and the Game Sprite in much more detail over on my Space Queen YouTube video here, but to keep it simple and on topic, Space Queen is an anomalous piece of software and hardware mimicking a classic 80s arcade machine. The very important distinction from average to anomalous is the incredibly advanced graphics present in the game, as well as the ability to transfer complete consciousness into the virtual world. Think a very big step above virtual reality, all running on incredibly advanced and somewhat alien hardware in an innocuous nostalgic package. After an unfortunate cross-contamination from IS-0235, Space Queen became corrupted and incredibly unstable, with the native species Lamogi within the game becoming outwardly hostile, and other levels of the game became inaccessible. Taking a very special interest in the game, Abe began visiting the corrupted simulation to study 307's effect on the Lamogi species, and eventually meeting the last living friendly member of a native species, Commander Feely, who mentions Abe by name when she meets us. As he promised the penguin he'd return to help but never came back. Before the invasion of the Cascade facility halted Abe's research in 083, he and a few other scientists working along TR teams pushed to gather information about the unknown Lycosoft company credited for the creation of the arcade machine, and managed to discover very exotic material from the anomalous virtual world after its corruption, described as being both fermionic, meaning matter created by the basic building blocks like electrons, protons, and neutrons, but also simultaneously being superpositional something only clearly observable in things like quantum computing. This exotic matter, called digital gold, is later used by our scientists to create some of the most advanced technology available during the conquest of the Cascade Research Facility. Next is I-0107 the time bomb. It's another very mysterious environment subject I covered in my other videos, but to summarize, 0107 is an ancient artifact first recorded in 200 BC. Observations show the object increases in size at a fixed rate of 0.073% every 206 days, and never stops or slows down. Identified as a weapon, Abe theorizes denizens from Antiverse 7, its origin Antiverse, intended for this object to explode and erase the entire universe for one reason or another. Luckily for Gate, Antiverse 7's time moves much, much faster, and either a miscalculation or unavailable technology led to the time bomb expanding at an incredibly slow pace in our world. Due to the object's completely impervious nature and existential danger, Gate shoots the object into space, with Abe calculating it would take 15,000 years to reach the size of Earth, and 50,000 to engulf the entire Milky Way galaxy. I-0138, or the train, is possibly the most immediately dangerous anomaly in gate possession. Also covered in my other videos, 138 is a steam locomotive in infinite perpetual motion inhabiting its own antiverse, and has been effectively converted into a mobile facility, all to keep this perpetual motion forever ongoing with multiple failsafes in place. This one objective is imperative, as Abe and Janet calculate all of the energy the train produces in its infinite motion holds all of it together, possibly atoms, and believe a stop would cause a chain reaction that would blow a hole in the Milky Way galaxy. But most harrowing of Abe's research into Cascade's immurement subjects is his time with I-091, the Layak. If you watch my videos, I'm sure you know what the Layak is by now, and if you don't, I'm sure you still do. But if you're somehow still unaware of what 091 is, it's a hostile predatory entity with non-corporeal properties, being only temporarily affected by X-ray wavelengths and direct line of sight. Luckily for Gate and everyone else, it only focuses on one target at a time and is only visible to said target. Unluckily for our Abe, while conducting research on the entity out in Indonesia, he unfortunately attracted its attention and unknowingly tracked it back from his expedition. 
all the way back to the research facility. Now roaming around looking for its prey, and other scientists becoming aware of its existence in the facility through Abe, he is administered stimulants to be kept awake and arrest 091's movements periodically while research into its containment is active. After enduring literal torture, I-091 was finally contained in its specialized chambers and Abe was allowed to rest, for now. Of course, as a scientist at Cascade, research into dangerous subjects is part of every egghead's routine, but along with risking a finger or two every day, many scientists use that gray matter to produce their own little toys, and Abe is no stranger to that at all. With a few mentions here and there of Abe's inventions, there's a lot we can piece together about how intelligent Abe really is as a tinkerer. A first mention in a deep field short, Janet inquires about a simulation of Abe's. This simulation is also spoken about by Mance in a log, wherein it's revealed Dr. Abe has invented a real-time simulation of the entire research facility, including staff, all to further the company's efficiency and Mance questions its ethicality. Now, it's not completely clear this simulation is done organically, digitally, or virtually, but regardless of its nature, such an invention is especially notable at the time, as during a conversation between Jenna and Abe down in the mist reactor, the simulation's power is covered when Abe mentions running his simulation at least 40,000 times before, none of which concluded in a disaster like that of the current situation at Cascade. And one of the most important advancements in Abe's portfolio is his studies into the A2 wildlife, specifically that of the pest. When conducting an operation on a pest to introduce cybernetic control implants into the central nervous system, he discovers a pattern on genes inside the pest's insulative tissue. This pattern is actually a bundle of coherent information, completely unrelated to the tissue itself. He actually describes this as being similar to a design note, or what me and you would call a patch note. Perhaps unbeknownst to Abe and the other scientists, this is actually direct evidence of the existence of I-0117, as a pest is indeed part of the XOR genome, a direct creation of the A2 supercreature. Along with this incredibly important discovery, Abe's cybernetic program is ultimately put on hiatus by Dr. Mance. But luckily for Abe, he does succeed in creating an obedient and controlled cybernetically augmented pest during the attack on Cascade, which we actually witness, who he names Ella, very cute. But unfortunately for us, leaves lots of very dangerous cybernetic bioweapon electro pests running around the facility for us to clean up. It's really up to chance if Abe's cybernetic program could have been able to perhaps create cybernetically advanced exors, terrasks, or even humans, but knowing Abe, definitely. But the debatably most important invention of Abe's, which once again was simply a blurb during conversation between he and Janet, is that of Abe's Antiverse 42 Metabolic Growth Serum. Again, I covered this in more detail in my gatekeeper video, but Abe's invention here is actually incredibly crucial behind the structure of the entire company. As you probably know, gatekeepers are the mercenary group responsible for heavy containment and security. One of the types of troops present are called Jotuns, incredibly large and bulky metahumans with superhuman strength and agility created with, you guessed it, a metabolic growth serum. This serum is gathered, administered, and managed by Cascade Synaptic Laboratories, which seem to be behind the creation of many gatekeeper troops. All of these little mentions of Abe's inventions and his involvement in the study of many of the most dangerous and scientifically puzzling immurement subjects should really tell you how important of a character the goofy Abe Stern really is. With even Dr. Mance singing his praises, we can only guess what other new information we get to learn about him during our dive into the residence sector in 1.0, so stay tuned for that. But anyways, I've been Myriad, your favorite mad scientist, and have a good day or night. Bye bye